Well, hey everybody. Um, my name is Sean, and uh, welcome to the uh, Stainwater Fishing Channel, Fisher Channel. Um, this is actually going to be my second carp video I'm going to make, um, mainly because the bass aren't really biting right now. I can't find them, but um, I'm going to make a second video because I realized that the first couple were uh, the first series wasn't very clear. Um, it didn't, the video didn't go as smoothly as I thought it would. Kind of boring. So. Um, Here's my second attempt at it. Um, it's about eight o'clock here in Virginia. Um, the sun's starting to set a little bit. I got my bug spray on. Um, I'm gonna try to see if I can catch a few carp in a few hours. I only got one pole with me today. Um, that way I can focus on it. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing I did in the other video. I'm gonna use bread on a bottom rig. Um, so the first step is to ball this bread up really good. You want to get into a tight, I put mine to cubes, but spheres, and I've seen people put theirs into pyramids too, and they they all work as long as it's nice and tight. And uh, you just put it on the tip. You don't want the tip showing through the, uh, the bread, otherwise the carp will drop the bait. They feel that. Um, I'm using two, uh, two pieces just to see uh, if that'll get me a bite a little faster. I'm using uh, little panfish hooks. It, pretty much the size doesn't necessarily matter as long as they're small. Any any hook size between about two and an eight is good. A two will probably be better, um, stronger. I think these are fours. And when you're carp fishing, you want to cast in flats on the lake. Right there where I just cast, it is a relatively flat area on the lake. Um, mostly silt, not a lot of vegetation, and uh, it's perfect for feeding carp. So um, let's see how many I can catch in these next few minutes until um, it gets dark or so. Um, the trick is that, oh, I just got a nibble. There's a lot of small carp in here, so I don't expect anything too big. Um, Really just going for numbers, not necessarily size. And uh, hopefully I can catch a few before it gets too dark. I have one nibbling on right now. It's not very big, I can tell by the bites. Carp do nibble on their bait, no matter how big. Okay, I missed that first one. not uncommon for me to catch turtles so I might catch a turtle during this video I hope not but I might um, a carp is known to drop its bait drop the bait after a little while um, if it gets too much resistance I prefer a semi sack line slack line meaning you want a little bit of a loop in your line but you want it to the point where if you raise your rod tip about an inch or so, the line would be tight. That's the best way I can define a semi-slack line. For all you guys who are just getting into carp fishing, um, I recommend fishing with a bottom rig like this or a fish finder rig. Um, I used a fish finder rig also in my other video. Um, basically, it's one or two hooks on a, on a rig like this, except instead of having a weight clipped onto the bottom, you have a sliding sinker up here. So it slides so the carp can pull without resisting, feeling resistance. All right, I'm going to cast right back into that spot because that seemed to be... Um, I would, it would probably going to take a little bit longer for a carp to bite, especially a bigger carp, um, than it will in this lake. So you have to have a little bit of patience and uh, just remember that the pond I'm fishing right now is just full of carp. So. If you plan to carp fish anywhere else, you're definitely going to have to wait a little longer to get a bite. I'm using bread right now, which is my favorite. It's the easiest to bring, probably the cheapest, easiest to pack and handle. But um, you can most definitely use dough. A lot of people use dough. Um, there's also corn. And uh, depending on what lives in your lake, you can also use nightcrawler to get carp. But um, usually some other fish, like a catfish or a bluegill or something like that finds the nightcrawler before the carp does in other lakes. So the trick is to remain as still as possible. Sometimes I like to sit down because um, it keeps you from shaking a little bit. Um, carp do spook very easily so you got to be careful. And uh, 
hopefully I'm not scaring them away by talking right now because they can also hear very easily. So I'm actually going to shut up for a little while and just fish. Ask me any questions you have in the comments. Um, I'll be sure to answer them. I'm actually going to sit down that way I can keep the rod tip still because right now I'm shaking a little bit and I don't want to scare the carp away. Alright, I just missed the second one. I like fishing for carp because they're a bit of a challenge. It's hard to hook them um, because they nibble on the bait so, uh, so gently. I'm not chumming the water because I'm only going to be here for about 40 minutes or so, but um, if you're going to fish for a, a big lake for a long time, you're definitely going to want to chum the water a bit, especially when the lake water is this calm and the bread won't float much anywhere. Definitely be a good idea to chum the water a bit. or bottom feeders so whatever rig you use it hardly matters um, as long as it's on the bottom you can also fish with a float or a bobber but um you want to make sure the got one you want to make sure the baits on the bottom carp you want to fight very smoothly because you can rip their lips pretty easily and of course the hooks bend very easily when they're for panfish even this little carp right here is fighting pretty hard There's carp number one. And there he goes. Off back into the water. <laughs> Gotta be careful. They, uh, they're they actually really, really good at taking, uh, dropping the hook. They're very good at spinning around in the water and uh, letting go of the hook. So you definitely want to keep the time, you want to keep the line tight. You want to hold your rod tip up pretty high and you want to just reel them in very smoothly. You can't be as rough with them as you could be with, let's say, a bass because their lips are very soft. Their lips are so soft, in fact, that you can't lip them like you could with most fish. If you try to lip a carp, it probably break its jaw. All right, let's try again. Let's see if I can actually uh, hold one. <laughs> try standing up this time too. It's definitely easier to set the hook when you're standing. I just was spooky with carp that spook easily. Sometimes it's better to sit down so you're not moving the bait much. In the middle of the summer, um, the carp are going to be in during the middle of the day. They're definitely going to be in some structure. So. You definitely want to cast into shade, and um, if there is no shade, then you're pretty much out of luck, and you're wasting your time fishing in the middle of the day. But um, that's why I'm down here in the evening. Um, the carp will definitely bite in the morning and evenings. They also bite at night, but um, I prefer not to fish at night here. And of course, I can't make a video of a night fishing with the GoPro. <laughs> Small carp tend to school, so when there's one of them, there's more. Larger carp tend to just do what the heck they want. Got one. Water is very warm. It's about 75, maybe 80 degrees. 
very hot one today. It was about 90 degrees. Now it's like 82 or so. And there's a carp. For those that don't know, this is called a common carp. Um, you can tell because of the red tail and the pattern. Their their scale their their uh, scales are about they're rounded shape like that. There's nothing on a carp that can hurt you. You can pretty much hold them any part of their body you want. I just would not lip them because they have very soft tissues. You want a piece of bread that can fit into a mouth about that size. And just so you know, that's just a little about the right of my thumb. So any bread ball bigger than that, you're not going to catch these things. In fact, the smaller the bread ball, almost the better because then the carp will pull harder and uh, you'll have a better hook set with a smaller bait. Carp is one of the few fish where um, you want to go smaller with your bait rather than larger. Um, and there's a carp. You can see them feeding on the surface sometimes. They have these two barbels that they use to reach on the bottom, but every once in a while they come to the surface to eat with seeds. And you can see that diamondback pattern on the surface. Looks like he's got some bite marks on the side, probably from turtles. Um, and if you see that diamondback pattern on the surface, you instantly know that that's either a grass carp or a common carp. And grass carp have very wide football shaped mouths. They're very different than these. As far as I know, there are no grass carp in this lake. So I'm gonna let them go and see if we can keep catching some more. There was carp number two. See how many I can catch before it gets too dark to see. So, like I said before, you don't have to use bread because unless you ball it up really good, it will fall off in the water. It will disintegrate in about, probably about an hour or two of being in the water, the bread will disintegrate a little bit off your hook. So you definitely want to replace bread frequently um, if you're going to use bread. I'd replace it about once every 20 minutes or so. And, but um, if you'd rather not, if you're gonna like fish at night or if you're gonna leave a line out and come back and check it later, um, I would recommend using dough instead, which stays on the hook a lot better. It's just a little harder to get a good hook set with the dough. It doesn't rip, the hook doesn't rip through the dough as easy as it does through bread. And I know a lot of people that use corn. If you're gonna use corn, I have used corn here before and had success. You want to line the entire hook up in corn. And when you're using corn, you absolutely have to wait until a strong take, a strong pull. You can't set the hook on the nibbles like you can with bread sometimes. And carp are fun fight, especially on light line. Um, obviously, I'm not using light gear. Um, a big carp would pull you over the lake if you didn't have big gear. Um, but you can still appreciate the fight power with them on this one. I've caught in probably four really good sized carp in here before out of probably the 300 I've caught. So, and those four are all managed to pull me forward a little bit. In fact, there's actually skid marks over there on the, the shore that I'll point out when I do a bass fishing video of me sliding in the mud while I was fighting a carp. And the skid marks are still there. Got another one. Carp are known to jump, so when they jump, you want to keep your rod tips super high. Even these small ones can pull like trucks. Carp number three. Got to be very careful when you're using two hooks with these things because they will flip the second hook into your skin. speak from experience with that. Here's carp number three. About the same size as the other ones have been. A little bigger than the first one, but same size as the second one. They're this one's pretty meaty. It's a little rounder than the other ones were. And a lot of you are probably wondering why I keep throwing them back. If 
they're a problem in the lake. Well, mainly because I don't have permission to kill them. I'm fishing on these people's property right here. And uh, I'm fishing under their rules. And uh, they prefer me to leave the fish alone. Very nice people, though. But, um, I don't know. Hopefully they'll eat themselves out. Or uh, I actually stocked this lake with some catfish. So hopefully the catfish will eat the carp out a little bit. It's perfectly healthy to have a few carp in a lake because they're good cleaners. They're pretty much like catfish. They clean up the bottom. They eat almost anything. Um, but you don't want to have too many or they'll eat up the vegetation in the lake and they'll kill off the other fish. I, I know this lake is overpopulated with them because unlike most lakes where if you cast a big lead weight out like this, You'll, uh, because this is a two ounce lead weight, you'll bring in seaweed and uh, plants and vegetation, stuff like that. This is the only lake I fish that where I don't. It's just a silty bottom lake. Nothing on the bottom but uh, trash and silt sand. Trying to get the bread balls on good. I'm hoping there'll be a larger carp hiding than the small ones. I doubt it, but you never know. My biggest carp was actually the very was the third one I have ever caught out of this lake. Um, I actually caught him. It was my very second day of fishing this lake ever, about two years ago. Um, the first day I caught one, probably 16 inch carp, pretty nice size one. That was the only one I caught, and it was a bright sunny day, but it was also fall. It was probably like, I think late September. Um, so it was still pretty warm. It was probably like 75 degrees or so. And then the second, second day I came, it was an overcast day. The first carp I caught was tiny. It was probably like eight inches long. Cast it in the same spot again, and my, line, my bobber just shot out in the middle of the lake. Reeled it in, funnest fight. It's probably my third best fight I've ever had on a rod and reel. Brought in probably my longest fish on record was probably about two and a half foot carp. And I also, and I caught him on bread next, on a float next to an old bush over there that's been cut down now. Um, probably in about two feet of water. And then I also caught a really big carp out in the middle fishing for catfish with a night crawler. And I've caught two very large ones on this bend over here, both on the same day, both right after each other. And uh, all these fish were about two feet, if not bigger. like the carp have settled down now. Caught three so far. I'm trying to learn how to fly fish right now. Hopefully I can learn how to master fly fishing and then I can start fly fishing for carp in here. But I'm still learning the basics of fly fishing. As soon as I find out where the bass are on the lake and what they're hitting, I'll make a stained water bass fishing video. I tried a lot earlier today and uh, couldn't get them to bite anything. But hey, when you can't catch bass, you might as well fish for carp. Because the carp will always bite no matter what the conditions are at certain temperatures. I always catch carp in the evening during the summer. But I also do pretty well in the morning. Like my first video I shot during the morning. Just waiting on a bite. I'm going to sit down just in case I might be scaring the carp with my movements. 
Sometimes I get bites shortly after I sat down. I don't know what the reason is for that, but who knows. So um, I'm actually using a large Shim Shimano reel. Um, my dad bought it for me for Easter. I asked him for a reel that would have a lot of line capacity, a spinner reel, and uh, he ended up getting me a reel that looks like a catch a carp. I mean, uh, a shark. But I'm going to use it for carp and catfish. And I also have a, a seven foot catfish rod to match it, an ugly stick. Um, I actually bought that with some recommendations from uh, some of the people on Fishing Scout and uh, a few other fishing apps. Um, once again, if you guys, I'm going to mention this in this video too. Um, if you guys are beginner fishermen, all those beginner fishermen out there, um, a good place to get started for pretty much every kind of fishing. Um, you should probably download two apps, um, the Fishing Scout and the Fin. They're both uh, little uh, almost forum-like apps that you can post pictures of your catches on or you can ask questions. You can uh, comment and like pictures. Um, they're both very helpful. I've definitely got a lot of success from them. And then if you're a bass fisherman, if you're strictly a bass fisherman, I would uh, download um, Bass Rumors too. They're all about bass fishing there. Um, some of the best bass fishermen I've ever seen are from are on that app, so. That's what I suggest. Just waiting for a bite. I'm actually gonna reel it in and check the bait. 